Hey everyone, it's Patch 3.23 of Fiction, and today I want to talk about the patented Ali Beast and Essence farming strategy that we have to talk about at the start of every single league start. This is a strategy that revolves around farming low tier maps, where we're going to be mostly focusing on farming essences and beasts the whole time. The reason for this being that essences do not scale with map tier at all. A tier one essence monster is going to have the same quantity and the same rarity of essences that a tier 16 essence monster will. The only difference being that the tier one essence monster is going to be ridiculously easy and you're going to one shot it while the tier 16 essence monster is going to be a raid boss harder than some of the bosses in this game. To add on to that, beasts also do not scale with map tier at all. They actually are negatively impacted by doing beasts in higher tiers. The only two good beasts that you actually are going to want to farm that are usually the only ones worth anything are Cryogic Chimeros and Phenomal Plagued Arachnids. These two are added into the beast pool in very low tier maps. And if you actually attempt to farm beasts in, for example, tier 16 map, there's going to be so many extra added beasts into the total pool that are complete garbage and worth nothing. that you're never going to actually see the two beasts that are worth something. And with this season, we are going to be adding ultimatum onto all this, which I think is going to be a very strong candidate for this farming strategy. Typically with this strategy, we only really need about 80 points as most of the other mechanics scale really hard with map tier and just we're not really worth the time and effort to do in a lower tier map. But I'm going to take a big bet here that ultimatum is either just going to be decent and worth doing or it's going to be absolutely wonderful. It's going to be a permanent addition to this whole tree. So why don't we start talking about the passageries and how to put all this together. Now, there is going to be a little change to how we're going to be putting everything together on League Launch. And the biggest reason for that being that we need to pick up 7th Gate. Essences are not available on the Atlas device this season. And this is actually one of the first seasons in a very long time where we haven't had essences. But luckily, 7th Gate has been added to the game, which means that if we pick up all four of the gateways on the tree, we have access to whatever map crafting device option that we want. This means we're going to be able to put essences back on every single one of our maps and it's going to make the strategy work because of that, because we want to add all the ultimatum points in, that means that we're going to need about 113 points or so to put this whole tree together. And because of that, we are going to want to change how we're going to acquire all of our points at the start of the season. What we're going to be doing is instead following this passage tree. And the way this is going to work is you're going to start in the middle and you're just going to path through the middle all the way to the Kirok nodes and you're going to be rushing Wondering Path. Once you picked up Wondering Path, you're simply going to go back to the start of the tree and you're simply just going to be picking up adjacent map drop chance nodes until you hit a 100% chance for one monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map. The reason we're going to be making this change this season is because this is the fastest way to get all of your passive points at the start of a season. I personally done the strategy a few times in the past and it takes me anywhere between four to five hours to get from tier one maps all the way to tier 16 maps. This is basically what all of the speedrunners do at the start of a season and whenever they want to go for a Exarch or Eater of Worlds run. And it's going to allow us to get all the extra points that we need for a strategy a lot faster than the traditional way we would have gone about this of just simply picking up all the points for a strategy as we went along. Now, there is one thing that we're going to have to talk about here, and it's going to be how you're actually going to progress to be able to make use of the increased speed. What you're going to do as soon as you finish Act 10, you're going to go to Karak and you're going to open up a shop and buy one copy of every map you don't have completion for. You're then going to go run those copies. And then once you run out of new maps, you should get a few new maps as you're doing those maps. And as soon as you run out of all of those maps, you're going to go back to Karak and you're going to start a Karak mission. Hopefully the Karak mission will give you a choice of a map that you don't have completion for. And as soon as you finish the Karak mission, the shop will reset. And that means you can go back to Karak and you'll have a plethora of new maps for you to run. You're just going to keep repeating this of doing all the maps that you currently have that you don't have completion for. And then a Karak mission to get more new maps until you get all the way through your Alice progression. Moving on next, I want to talk about the tree itself and how to put all this together. So this tree is going to be very simple. We just want to path through all of the essence nodes. We're going to need to pick up prolific essence for an additional essence. We're going to need to pick up amplified energies because it's going to actually make it so our essences are going to be shrieking and higher. We're going to be picking up crystal resonance, which is going to duplicate any essence monster that has a shrieking essence on it. And we're going to be picking up crystallize, which is going to give us a chance of a large amount of essences on a single monster. As for the beast nodes, they're going to be very simple. At the start, we want to pick up these two small duplication chance nodes as they are going to give us a 6% chance that we hit a jackpot on the beast themselves. You can choose to pick up Animal Companion if you want, as this will save you a little bit of money as you start off your mapping adventure by letting you sustain your Einhar missions on your own a little bit more. But personally, I feel like the price of Beast Series Scarabs are cheap enough at the start of the season. They shouldn't need that. Moving on next, over here to the left, we're going to pick up Big Game, which gives us a 15% chance that Yellow Beasts are going to be placed with Red Beasts. And the nice thing is when that procs on top of a Great Migration, which gives your map 
an 8% chance to just have a lot of monsters in it, you could potentially have something like 30, 40 red beasts in a single map. Lastly, we are going to go over to the node on the left and we're we'll picking up Hunt for Creation and Natural Selection. You do not want to pick up any of these other three. The main focus here is going to be the Kraiki Chimeral. So if we pick up these two together, we are going to increase our chances as much as possible. We could potentially pick up Hunt for Phenomus, but that would dilute the chance for Chimerals, and Chimerals are worth substantially more than Phenomal Plague Arachnids, which is going to be the other beasts that we're going to be interested in. Lastly, I want to talk about why we're going to be adding Ultimatum onto this. First off, you're going to be able to get quite a lot of base default chance for Ultimatums to spawn your maps. We have a wheel here that's going to give us 25%, and then we have one small node here that's also going to give us 5% for free. Not only with that, but the other ultimatum nodes are actually really strong and I expect them to do really, really well. First, we have Prove Yourself Worthy, which makes it so your ultimatums are harder, but you have a 25% chance for the rewards to be duplicated. And we have Stater Ground, which means that the ultimatum zone is going to be a little bit smaller, but you're going to get an additional reward, which is going to be really nice, especially since your rewards scale really fast with rounds. And on top of that, we're going to be picking up Brave the Tower, which is going to give us a higher chance to see the Trial Master. Now, this is the only point I'm not really sure on. I'm not sure if Trial Master can actually spawn in lower tier maps. This is something we're going to have to see once we actually get to play the new season. Trial Master back at Ultimatum wasn't able to spawn in lower tier maps and was only able to spawn in tier 14 or higher. So this could potentially be something that we're going to be dropping. And I'll leave a pinned comment in the description below to talk about this further as we get into season if we can confirm that Trial Master cannot spawn in lower tier maps. If that's the case, you're just going to be dropping these points. But if Trial Master can spawn in low tier maps, this is going to be an amazing node to pick up as him dropping a full stack of catalysts is going to be a large amount of money. That should bring us into the discussion of why we're actually adding ultimatum onto this. Well, Metamorph is going to be completely removed from the game and all nodes related to Metamorph are being replaced with ultimatum nodes. Catalysts are worth a lot of money at the start of a season, no matter what. And because they are being added over to ultimatum, ultimatums are now going to be worth a lot. The reason we'd be interested in farming catalysts is because I do not think that they are going to scale with map tier. I think all catalysts are going to be as common as they typically were from Metamorph and Ultimatum in any tier of mapping, meaning the main reward out of Ultimatum should not scale with map tier. I could be completely wrong on this and Ultimatum might not be worth doing at all, but we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. But I really do have high hopes. That even if catalysts are not as common as I expect them to be, I still think they're going to be worth a lot of money simply because basically all the catalysts are worth multiple chaos per at the start of a season. Meaning if you can get yourself two, three, four catalysts per Ultimatum, that can actually add a decent amount of money or hour to your strategy. The last thing I want to talk about the tree is going to be something very important and you do not want to skip out on this. We need to take seventh gate. As I mentioned earlier, essences are not available on the tree. We need to pick up seventh gates and we need to get seventh gate to work to be able to actually see essences. You need to make sure you pick up all six gateways. There's three on the left and then the three on the right to be able to actually have the option on the map device. If you do not, you need to make sure that you have what all of your gateways picked up. And you might be missing one. Next, I want to talk about what tier maps we're going to be running. This is a strategy that's going to be revolved around low tier maps and we want to specifically stay in tier one through four maps. You do not want to do a tier five or higher map once you're actually running the strategy. The reason for that being that as soon as you do tier five or higher maps, you're going to add a lot of garbage red beasts into the red beast pool, meaning the two beasts that we're actually farming for that are worth all the money are going to be diluted and you're going to see them less often. On top of that, the higher the tier you go, the harder your essence monsters are going to be, which is going to overall make it a little bit more painful. In terms of which maps we're going to be running, this video is going to come out a few days before the league launches. Because of this, we are not going to have the map data so I cannot tell you exactly which maps to actually run. This is typically information that is only released a day or two prior to season launching and I will update the description and I will update the pinned comments below the video on which maps you actually want to do at the start of a season. There are going to be quite a lot of good options for us this season and we're going to hope that at least some of the maps that I'm about to mention are going to be low tier maps and overall our pool is going to be so big that the chances for us to not get screwed over is going to be very large. We typically just want to have a map that's very easy for us to check the whole map in a efficient way. So for example think of Strand. Strand is just a straight line. It's very difficult to accidentally miss a little bit of Strand. That means Strand can be a very very quick and efficient map to check for is we don't really care to kill the boss in the map. We just simply want to run through, click on all of our essences, capture all of our beasts and move on to the next map. So some potential good maps, as long as they are naturally between tier one to four next season would be things such as cemetery, beach, 
Strand, Belfry, Jungle Valley, Ramparts, Canyon, and Dry Sea. We're going to have to see which of the maps are actually going to be available. And this is unfortunately just something that I wish I could tell you ahead of time, but I just unfortunately cannot. The next topic I want to talk about is going to be maps to scene and how you are going to be able to get all of the maps that you need to be able to run this 24 seven. So first thing to mention is that we're going to be going up to end game, which means one thing that we can finally add to this strategy that we really didn't have a reason to go for before is singular focus. What I might recommend for you to do is to potentially go do a Elder Guardian, a Shaper Guardian, a Conqueror, to kill Exar, to kill Eater of Worlds, to do maybe a Shaper or a Cyrus. What I'm trying to recommend here is for you to go get a few of your favorite map slots, so then you can also run Singular Focus. Typically, if you want to do the strategy on League Launch, you'd only be going to low red maps before you had enough points, so it never really made sense to go get favorite slots. To add to this, we don't really need to actually get Singular Focus. It's just going to be a nice to have if you want to put a little bit of extra effort before starting to farm. But our main maps of scene is simply going to come from all the higher map tier chance drop nodes that we're going to be picking up all over the tree. These are going to give us substantially more maps and it's going to make the maps upgrade through the map upgrade system a little bit faster, meaning we're going to be able to see maps of whatever tier we're running substantially more often. The other thing we're going to be adding onto this is going to be a rusted cartography scarab on every single one of our maps. You do not need the rusted cartography scarab as long as you kill enough mobs in each map. But if you do add the rusted cartography scarab, you're going to get so many extra maps. So you're going to be able to sell them in bulk for extra profit. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to want to do the strategy and some of those people are not going to want to care about maps scene and they'd rather choose to just buy the maps from other people who are farming the same strategy so because of that you can make quite a lot of extra profit just selling these maps off to other people especially as we get further and further into week one as more and more people start to farm the strategy. As for the setup on how we're going to be running these maps, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to use a strand here as an example, but this would apply to whatever map that we're going to be choosing to run in Affliction. All you're going to be doing is you're going to take your map and you're going to alk it. You don't necessarily have to alk it if you have a big backlog of maps, but if you are just starting off or if your total map pool isn't that big, you should alk your maps for additional quantity and pack size, which is going to mean you get a little bit extra maps. On top of that, we're going to be adding on a rusted B series scarab. This is how we're going to be getting Einhart every time. And this is going to be better than the Einhart missions because this also guarantees us an additional red beast. But if these are too expensive or if you cannot afford them at the start of a season, you can just choose to use your Einhart missions as a substitute for a few of your maps. And then we're going to be adding on a rusted cartography scarab just to get a little bit of extra maps, which we can then sell to other people. In terms of the setup and the map device, it's going to be very simple. We just put our map in as well as our two scarabs. And then we'll be scrolling down until we find the essence option. If the essence option isn't there for you, that means you do not have your seventh gate set up properly. And that means you need to pick up the rest of the gateways on the tree to be able to see every single map option. It is incredibly important to mention that you do not want a single void stone actually socketed in. If you have them socketed in, then all of your maps will be a substantially higher tier, meaning you won't be able to actually get low tier maps to drop. We want to do this with zero void stones actually in our device because that way all maps that are naturally tier one through tier four will stay as tier one through tier four and we can actually get them to drop. Next, let's talk about how you're going to actually run the maps themselves. So the maps are going to be very simple. You're just simply going to try and beeline towards the end of the map while making sure you check every nook and cranny of it for any red beasts and for all the essences. You do not need to actually kill the boss at the end, but if you are struggling with map sustain, killing the boss is typically a very good option as it's going to have a very high chance to drop additional maps. As you're going through and doing your essences, there are going to be a few essences that you actually want to corrupt with a remnant of corruption. Remnants of Corruption should be items that you slowly get as you kill the Essence Monsters as one of our Atlas nodes gives us a chance for them to spawn on the Essence Monsters. And what the Essence of Corruption is going to do is it's going to corrupt the Essences in a bunch of different ways. The Corruption outcomes that we're going to be interested in here are going to be the ones that turn the Purple Essences into the Corruption Exclusive Essences and the plus one upgrade to all the Essences in the stack when we see high value Essences. Now, in terms of the actual essences that you want to corrupt as a general guide, if you see a purple one, so if you see a uh, essence that is called Scorn, Envy, Misery, or Dread, you are going to always use a Remnant Corruption. Outside of that, the other essences that you're going to be interested in using a Remnant Corruption on are going to specifically be Shrieking Loathing, Greed, and Torment. These are going to be the blue, light blue, and orange essences, and these are always in demand high value essences. 
Other than that, you're going to use a remnant corruption on any essence monster that has anywhere between three, four, five essences or more. It doesn't really matter what essences are on it, but if you do see a big stack of essences on a monster, you do want to corrupt it. There will be a note in the description if you want a written out guide for what to corrupt, but as a quick TLDR, purple ones, shrieking, loathing, greed, torment, and then any big stack of essences. Now, moving on to the beast, you don't actually want to kill all the beasts. There's only two very specific beasts that you're actually on the lookout for. The first one being the plagued phenomenal arachnid, which is a big spider, which has little cysts on its back. There is nothing else in the game that looks anything like it. So if you see a big spider that has a red beast icon on the map, that is your target. And then the other one is going to be the cryakeek chimera, which is a blue looking frog. They're very, very distinct from anything else. So as long as you keep in mind, big spider, big frog, everything else can be completely ignored as those are the only two beasts that are typically worth any money. It's going to take you a little bit to get used to what to look out for. But once you're accustomed to it and once you know what the two beasts look like, you can just simply run by every other beast. You don't need to bother killing the yellow beast. You don't need to bother killing the red beast. You're simply just putting beasts on your maps with the hopes that the high value beasts are going to spawn, which are the only ones you're going to want to actually bother to kill. Moving on next, I want to talk about how you're going to be selling everything. So you're going to be mostly making profit from four specific things. One is going to be any excess maps they get. Two is going to be any sort of ultimatum loot that you get uh, along with catalysts. Three is going to be essences and four is going to be beasts. The first thing I want to go over is how to actually get your beasts out of the menagerie and how to clean it up once it starts to get full. So all you're going to have to do is to come over to Einhar and you're going to purchase items. Einhar is going to sell beastiary orbs for one chaos each and these are what is used to actually take out the beasts out of the menagerie. In the description, there's going to be a regex, which you can post in the filter beasts button at the bottom of your menagerie. And what this will do is it will filter out all the beasts that are not worth anything and only show you the high valued beasts. Now on here, as you can see, we have Craigy Chimeros and Phenomal Plague Arachnids, but we also have two beasts I didn't really mention too much, which are Ferric Lynx Alphas and Ferric Wolf Alphas. These will sometimes maybe go for two, three, five chaos throughout a season. And I can't really tell you the price of these two specifically, but sometimes they might be worth actually bottling and selling to people. So that's why they are in the regex itself. But all you have to do once you are done farming and you're ready to sell off your beast, you just simply right click a beast here or and you, you just click on the beast that you want to collect from the menagerie and it'll be stored in a beast here or now as for the rest of the beasts, which are not these beasts that you want to actually bottle up that are worth nothing. The fastest way to actually clear all these out, because if you go over 1000 beasts, the menagerie is going to start randomly deleting beasts, meaning it potentially delete your high value beasts, is you're simply just going to remove any filter. You're going to hover over the little release X at the top left most beasts, and then you're just going to spam click while spam hitting enter. What this is going to do is it's going to click the release button and then a confirmation comes up asking you if you really want to release it. And while we do this, enter hits okay for you, meaning that if you just sit here and just spam click and enter like this for maybe two, three minutes, you'll very quickly clear out all of your menagerie. Unfortunately, there is not a better way to do this and we can blame GGG for that. And this is something you're going to have to do maybe every hundred maps or so. You want to pay attention to your chat and it will very clearly start yelling at you when your menagerie is full. So do just make sure you're on the lookout for that and not go over your cap. As for selling your essences, it's going to be very simple as well. All you're going to have to do is just put them in your essence tab and then make the essence tab public. You're then going to go to POE stack and you're going to use the TFT bulk tool to sell them through POE stack. The price of the essences is going to change every season and they do fluctuate a little bit here and there. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to TFT bulk essence channel on their discord and take a look at what people are actually selling their essences for. Typically it's anywhere between 85 to hundred percent of POE ninja value. But as I said, that fluctuates every season. What you want to do before you actually sell them is to upgrade all of your essences to at least shrieking. Don't bother upgrading them to deafening. Upgrading them just as shrieking and then selling whatever essence is actually upgraded to deafening through using remnants of corruption is more than enough and is typically going to give you the highest amount of profit. But all you have to do is just post them through the bulk tool. And typically, if you price them correctly, you'll have a flood of people messaging you to buy them immediately. One final thing I want to mention here about how to sell everything 
is that essences typically do not sell the first day or two of the season. You have to remember, everyone is starting off fresh and everyone is poor. People who typically buy these essences are buying them to start crafting half decent gear to resell back on the market, or they're buying it to craft their own upgrades. And people just don't have enough raw currency to be able to afford buying essences until a few days into the league. What this means is if you want to start farming this on day one, you're most likely going to be better off just holding on to all of your essences and start selling them on day three, day four. Now, if you do want to make upgrades, you can potentially sell the essences that are basically guaranteed to sell even on day one, such as essences of greed and essences of loathing. Other than that, the majority of your essences, I would highly recommend just hold on. The same goes for beasts. Beasts will sell in the first few days of the season, but think of beasts as an investment. These are going to be an item that's only going to grow in value as we get further into the season. And what I would typically recommend for most people is to hold on to them until about the end of week one. The beasts that we're actually farming are used in high-end mirror tier crafting. And until mirror tier crafting begins ramping up, which typically happens around week two, there really isn't much interest in this beast. Outside of people buying them to hold on to them as a further investment because they know the price of them will go up as well. So just how people typically swap all their money over from chaos to divs to then gain value as the div price rises. People will do the same with these beasts. Well, they'll buy them while they're cheap because they know these beasts are going to rise up in value quite hard. Meaning if you really do want to make a little bit of money earlier on, you can just sell your craggy chimeras and your renewal plague arachnids as you need more money but highly recommend if you don't immediately need the money just to hold on to them as they only gain more value each day that's all i really have to say for this this is by far my favorite strategy and i'm so curious to see how ultimatum fits in all this and how it's going to affect the money per hour and i'm curious to see if ultimatum is going to push it even further as in some seasons beast and essences has basically been number one and other seasons it's been about a mid-tier strategy but I think with Ultimatum, this should be towards the top again for the upcoming season. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. I also stream on Twitch every single day. So if you want to come by and ask your questions there, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Or if you just want to hang out, I'll be more than happy to see you on Twitch. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you cuties in the next video.